Okay, welcome back to the Trucker Brown channel. The people that are seeing this first is on the Patreon. You're seeing it late. Patreon link will be in the bottom. Also, Just TV, Just Phil TV link will be at the bottom. That is this man's channel. This guy right here, I got a question for. Him. A rookie comes into the game. He don't know what to expect. How much is a rookie worth pay-wise coming into the game? In today's market, a realistic number to expect. Oh, let me let me say it like this. You shouldn't go to a company in today's market for less than 40 cents a mile. That's the bare bottom. We're talking about the bottom of the barrel. Now, obviously, there's plenty of companies offering more than that now. But you should not be driving a truck for less than 40 cents a mile. That's I started at 22. And I started at, I started at 32, which is still it's, it's leagues away from, from what the kind of checks we were seeing back then. Yeah, because you got to think about it. When I started, I think Swift was like 24 26 cents and now they're starting 39 yeah good friend of mine when he when he started he was making 28 at snyder what does snyder pay now i believe they start now at about 42 cents i'd have, 40 to, I'd have to check to verify but i believe around that yeah so if they're not getting 40 just yeah. go move on find right. one that's paying you for it. just walk away now this is within reason if you got a crazy background do you you may have to start somewhere funky in the beginning to get on so Keep that and don't go in there with a with a, with a trashy uh, MVR, but got champagne thoughts on what you think you're gonna get paid. You gonna have to you gonna have to uh, will and deal a little bit. Right. Oh, okay, tell us what they should expect on the truck. Like 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 you, I'm in your truck right now. This one's decked out. Yeah, they're not getting this day first. You'll go. No, I I'm in a special situation through through networking and and experience. <laughs> That. Yes. So, realistically, when it comes to the tractor itself, I would say, in terms of year age, I let's see what year is this? Twenty twenty one. I wouldn't be driving anything older than, and this is this is like this is got this is a bad situation. I would say I wouldn't be driving anything older than twenty sixteen. In my unless. Unless you're an oil field dude, that don't count. They yeah, are the money gonna come with us. Yeah, they over there by themselves. Yeah. Or if you're if you're a um, a pork guy and you're not yeah. working for one of the big companies, mm-hmm. you know, don't expect nothing shiny with that. We talking about OTR yes. on the road, the average run of the mill job. Yes, I wouldn't drive if you're if you're an OTR guy and you're going to one of the majors. I wouldn't drive nothing older than the 2018, honestly. And the rule of thumb, the rule of thumb is the majors cycle their trucks out at three years right. so if it's 21 you're talking about 20 20 2019 it should be an 18 or a 19 at the bottom yeah and even if they do have an 18 it's probably less than six months for being traded out anyway right and they're gonna and when, usually they're gonna see how you run on that old one if you ride it to a trade out they'll give you a, they, you probably got to do one coming down the pipe oh yeah definitely nine times out of ten yeah you get an older truck within six months if you do what you're supposed to do because they'll let you hang if you if you out here messing around <laughs> And give you another dirty joint. Yeah, but if you if you run them like you're supposed to within within six months, because they're they usually trade them off right before they hit five hundred thousand miles, mm-hmm. or some some of them might run to six hundred, but usually five hundred thousand miles, they're giving it back up and you're getting something nicer. Now, um, what questions should they ask about the truck, like APU? And- okay, so checklist of things, which times have changed, so you don't have to ask if it's going to be an automatic or stick. It's going to be an automatic. It's going to be an automatic. So that's off the rip. In terms of pulling capability, if you're working for a major, they've already got a spec to pull whatever it is you're hauling, even if it's not necessarily built to do that, but they are they know what they're doing in terms of buying a truck spec and all that. So all that specking it for, M- yeah, for MPG. All the engine talk, the, the Cummins and the Detroit, all that's irrelevant. Because if you're working for a major, you're going to get what they're going to get. It's going to be a pack car. Yeah, it's going to be a pack car. It's going to be a Detroit. That's, hey, sorry. That's just, that's just what that's you got. What you rolling with. Flatbed, if you if you were the right one, you might get a Cummins. Yeah, you, you got some it. power. But mm. aside from that, it's going to be a Detroit or a pack car. It's, a, it's a known fact that flatbed companies spec their trucks out better than most companies besides tanker guys. Right. They have to because of the, the pulling. Right, like it hauling hauling flatbed, you start hauling some of this odd freight. If if your truck ain't set to handle that, it's gonna cause some issues, especially with these automatic transmissions because they sensitive. That's a fact. So, and then even with the tank guys, 
that can kind of be 50-50 depending on who you haul for because some of them, because of the kind of tanks they're pulling in the slosh, some of them need a stick truck. But more right. than likely, if it's you're driving for any, it's automatic. So in terms of amenities, of course, your AC needs to be working. If your truck doesn't have an APU set up, you need, but I'm talking about before, the day you pull off the lot, not even before you pull off the lot, the day they hand you the keys, like, okay, we're assigning you truck, you know, 1,000, whatever. Check your bunk heater. Mm. It is a sad day in Kansas <laughs> when it didn't got down to 38 degrees and you ain't got no heat. And they won't let you idle the truck. Right. None of these companies are letting you idle. So you can just, you can hang it up. One, because a lot of these states, the laws have changed where that's illegal. Like, for example, New York City and certain parts of California. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. And even if it don't, because the priority of major companies is to take care of emissions, two minutes, that thing ain't cutting off anyway. Like, like, for example, a company a friend of mine works for, he said the light too long. His truck got off. In wow. gear. In gear, brakes off. In two minutes. You sit there longer than too long than two minutes, it's cutting off. You can hang it up. That's crazy. In fact, I've had it happen to me in some heavy traffic situations. A company I worked for uh, when I was on a dedicated account sat too long in the light. Truck cut smooth off. Everybody looking at me crazy like, what is he doing? Is the truck broke? What's, what's going on here? Mm, like that's, it's falling out. Yeah, that's that's how serious it is about, now, about the emissions. In the league, every single truck got an APU standard. Yeah. That's why I be telling y'all, man, I'm going to just go to the league. Because their stuff does cut off if you idle it too long. But as soon as you cut off, the APU automatically cuts on. Yes. So, rule of thumb, OTR guy, if you ain't got an APU, run away. Now, I know some companies believe in the opti idle thing. No, oh, this This next disclaimer is my personal opinion. Go buy to your starter. Yeah, do not, do not, do not use opti idle. It is bad for a starter. I'm in a brand new truck. Now, this is no fault to the company I work for or anything like that. This is just strictly equipment. I've been using Opti Idle since I had this truck. It caused me some issues and basically cost me $1,800 for them to just tell me what was wrong with it. They charged me $800 in diagnosis to tell me, oh, your starter's going bad. Right. Now, mind you, I'm still going to have to buy a starter. I'm still going to have to have it put on. See, this puts you in this. You just move into the next conversation, which is still a just starting conversation. Right. They're gonna to try to convert them to lease in the class. Oh, oh. Should they go lease off jump? <sighs> Man, and this is one of those things that starts starts arguments with people because there's been some success stories. Like there's there's a beautiful example, Mr. Parks. Right. He's a he's a phenomenal success story in terms of off the rip handling business. Y'all are not him. <laughs> Y'all ain't built like him at all. This dude is different. You understand what I'm saying? You are not ready for the heartbreak, <laughs> for the agony, for the mental strain that comes with leasing. The relationship problems with your old lady because you done blew $7,000. Well, you didn't blow it, but you got to spend it. Right. Hey, I'm sorry we can't go buy that new couch. I had to drop 1500 on the truck this week. And I ain't getting paid. Yes. Oh, for man. two weeks. For two weeks. Oh my God! Oh. Mm, that's some bad. That's hard. listen. I know you wanted to go to go to Little Wahoo's or down to the, the water park, but I gotta drop five hundred to get this tune up. Ouch! Yeah, it hurts, man. Now, it's some good days too, but at the same time, this what I, t I, I waited three years. I waited five. I waited three years. So by the time that I jumped into the lease position, the actual doing the job wasn't the question. Like driving mountains, traffic, snow. I had that perfected. Then I then I could just focus on if I'm making the loads. I'm not in here trying to figure out how to back while I'm leasing. Like I just personally don't think you should do that. I think you should enjoy your enjoy your career for two years and enjoy your traveling without thinking about what you're gonna have to pay to fix the truck. That's what I personally think. But you do what you want to do. Yeah, the choice is yours. Nobody's here to here to sway you one way or the other. We like this. This is not a hold your hand industry. Yeah, we don't get paid if you don't go lease. What I'm saying is. If you put your booty meat on the griddle, they're going to turn the heat up on you. And you're going to pay. You, let me tell you something. You can have a brand new truck and be in the shop every week. Yeah, it doesn't matter, man. You just need to make sure you're awesome at driving and know all the tricks of the trade. Like, uh, you know, my father, I seen him put an airbag on 
with three tools out of his little box on the side and a brick. And I paid $480 for like loves or something to put it on. And I was like, pop your airbag is like, all right, give me this right here. And he just propped up, boop, bloop, 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 and slapped that joint on and kept driving. Yeah. If you're not, if you don't know the tricks of the trade, like you just gonna have to go over to the fuel man. And let me tell you, his pants is unzipped as soon as you pull in, bro. He gonna get that meat out you. Either it's how long he gonna hold you, the hourly rate, because a lot of y'all, these guys don't even know about the hourly rate. <laughs> they don't even know what that, they think, they think, oh, it's just a part. No. The part ain't was he hurting you. Let me tell you, I went to, <laughs> because I thought that I could have this issue handled under warranty, <laughs> because Freightliner likes to likes to play their games that they play when it comes to handling warranty situations. Right. Okay. So this particular shop I went to, their shop rate is $140 an hour. Mm. And we ain't talking about actively turning bulbs. This is about to look at your truck. It is a minimum of $140 an hour. And just as a sidebar, just to just to show you how transparent they are across the board, for people that are that are vacationing or the people that live out of RVs, they charge them $150 an hour. They charge them more? Yes. $150 an hour for, $150 an hour for them to look at their RV or to tune it up or to tell them what's going on with their situation. They ain't wrong for doing grandma like that. Though. Yeah. There was a there was a nice older couple that I met while I was there. Uh, they were they were there for I want to say eight hours to have their their RV looked at that they 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 were taking home basically. That's crazy. Eight hours at one fifty. Yeah. Ooh. Not counting parts because you know they're gonna upcharge you on that. You ain't getting yeah. the manufacturer rate. You can hang yeah, that you up. You gonna get hit. So man, bro. Yeah. So they walked out of there two three thousand. <laughs> On a fixed income, supposed to be in their twilight. Years. Yes, that's sad, bro. Yeah, it is. It is ridiculous, man. But y'all don't understand the, the the shop. The shop is a big pain because when you get when you get involved with the, this is what I tell people. I'd rather get a dealership the money than the shop. They'd be like, why? I'd rather buy a newer truck and get a dealership the money every week because a dealership allows you to run while you're paying them. You pay that shop, they stop your money. You can't run. So now you paying them and you ain't making the money. It's a term we use called bleeding out. You're just bleeding out. You're hemorrhaging money. Yeah. And and, and I done heard stories two, three weeks, and you think that's terrible. I done heard two, three months, bro. Don't have to break the whole engine down or something. You go in there and your whole engine's just laying out. Like it's a bad deal, bro. Yeah. So try to this whole old truck thing, I know there's some channels saying buy truck cash and all that type of stuff. I'm here to tell you, man, you got to be bred for that, bro. You got to be bred. Yes, that is a, that is a generation that, that doesn't really exist anymore. No, where they <laughs> fixed everything but the engine being taken apart. Every thing around the engine and on the axles and lot, they did all that themselves. Yeah. And just being honest for my own personal situation, I have the ability to do most of the stuff that's necessary for maintaining a truck. But here's the problem. I don't have the time. Mm. That's why in a lot of cases, unless it's something quick like a like a belt or an airline or something like that, I'm taking it to the shop anyway because they can do it faster. They have a whole arraignment and setup ready to go to do what they need to do to fix your truck. I could do that stuff, but it's going to take me three times as longer, not because I don't have the skill or experience. It's because I don't have the equipment that's designed for that. And these newer trucks, man, they got special things to take pulleys off. Yeah. It ain't just a wrench. They got a special thing that clamps it to pull it off. Yeah, it's a, it, they they're hip. They know that you want to fix it yourself. Some of this stuff, if you you unplug the wrong sensor without having their their consult machine plugged in, you lock your whole truck up. You you can hang it up. And I gotta be towed. Oh my god, the tow man. Oh, the tow man, bro. Oh the main god. abuser of the game is the tow man. Six hundred dollars for a, a clutch kick. And if y'all don't know what a clutch kick means, that means, say for example, cold winter, can't get your truck started, whether it be a starter or a battery issue, but you're driving a stick truck. Now, this don't really apply to the electronic new guys anymore, but just to tell worse. you what it's like. So, 
you out here in the snow in the in the final frontier somewhere. Truck won't starve because you didn't cut it off overnight. You just run off your bunk heater. So now you got to call the tow man to come pop your truck. Now he's not gonna hook up his cables. Now he can get out there in the hot in the cold snow to, to try to jimmy your old batteries to get the crank. He's gonna hook up his chain to your front bumper. And yank it. He gonna he gonna run that winch up and then he gonna yank the truck. He's like, okay, hey, pop it in third gear. When I pull it, dump the clutch. And it starts right. And your truck starts right on there. And he's gonna walk up to you with that old Cincinnati pimp talk, cause he know you about to get your eye. Right, that's gonna run you, you know, I had to do this gonna run you about six fifty. <sighs> you like six hundred dollars for what all you did was yank your five. Look, man, yeah. hey. And the thing is he ain't gonna detach to you, pay him. Exactly. So either you gonna get mad at six fifty, uh you ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I, exactly. I think I got a pool started, it was about I was in Mississippi though. I got <sighs> it for like Five, I got it for like four ninety five. That was a and discount. And he was looking out, bro. Yeah, that was a discount. I remember I got hauled because them trucks are amazing. It hauled me and the forty two thousand pound load, all take, hooked together. Just yanked us all the way there. Yanked us eight miles. That thing cost me like fourteen hundred bucks, man, for eight miles, bro. Then I got to the shop. They hit me six racks, and of course he hauled me to his shop. It's just a lot of sexual abuse, man. It's, there's no way to, other way to classify it, man. And I had to go to the hotel. And the hotels near the shops, they double charging. Meanwhile, you bleeding out because you're sitting on this load. You're sitting on this load. And then when you call to do, hey, man, uh, 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 you going to take the load? No, nah, you're just going to sit on that joint. And then by the time I was done with the load, I had to wait a day or something, especially dry load. I had to wait for them to give me an appointment, bro. I was just losing money left and right. Now I'm taking advances. So y'all don't need know about the advance rate. Oh man! See, <laughs> so this See, one, <laughs> oh, you did, you did took me back with that one. Oh, man. man, the advance. What you you making six hundred a week and two fifty coming out because you took an advance, bro? <sighs> that means you got to take another advance. Oh man, man, bro, it's the, sad. The beautiful thing, I just to just to sum this up. If you're if you're a rookie and yes they are going to push leasing on you especially if you go to the league or some of these other places they make money off of it. you know the best thing that you can do in your early years is kind of like how they how the older people tell you in life to enjoy your youth in, enjoy your youth in this trucking business because it's sweet when the when the veil drops and you you start to look behind the curtain and really see what's going on and really see how many layers of of abuse you've been taking <laughs> it stops being fun it you know does. and at that point it's either you're going to start i guess you could say start fighting back by removing some of those layers out of the way between you and the money or you're going to get out and the more layers you pull away from you and the money the more risk you're taking yes because you know you start thinking well the 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 mega carrier is is the devil, but you're not realizing how much stuff the mega carrier is protecting you from. Yes. So now you're out here. There is no guarantee you're gonna get a load. I've worked at a company and called them. They said we just ain't got no more loads. They had sat for three days. They didn't have any. And I'm thinking I was I'm I'm watching Swift guys drive by me all day, yeah. but they ain't getting paid no money. But they they running. So 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 sometimes they'll say, oh well, you know, it's three forty nine a load over here. But you ain't running every day. And then that guy in the league is getting 249, but he's running every day. He's making more money than you, and it's more consistent. I'm talking about it's consistent the whole year. There's some places you go, once winter hit, you're struggling. And here's a point to drive home. If, if you decide to, to, to put put yourself on the griddle in the lease game, or or if you happen to have a have a uncle or a home where it hooks you up with one of his trucks that he's got, and you you know you out here in the open market situation. Here's a here's a term that has to be removed from your vocabulary. A week. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. It does not exist. I get seven grand a week. <laughs> I get four grand a week. That's the first and biggest lie. I was gonna say it's the biggest, the most used. It's not. I don't even say it's a lie. It's the most ignorant statement because a lot of them they're not even using it. They're not even thinking about how they're using it. They're just saying it because they that's how they're used to talking. First of all, business owners don't use a week. Employees use a week. If you start leasing, a week is out your that's out your vocabulary. You're not a week dude no more. Yeah, you a uh, if it goes well guy. Yeah, a 
We are we are at averages. Yeah, that's that's how we operate. I make about eight grand a week. That's that's what you going uh, eight grand a month. Um, yeah, we it, it goes from you you stop thinking in terms of of seven days. You're now you now have to change your mind state to think 21, 30, 45, 90 mm-hmm. days down the road. Which because, means when you get twenty grand in your bank account, you still counting pennies because you don't know what's gonna happen. Yes, because the thing about the thing about leasing that that people just don't understand. It's like, yeah, there's a there's a scale up in money, but you're you're no longer just a, a driver. You are a business entity. That's why they make you go get your EIN. Or if you go to the lead, that's why they set you up with a pocket LLC. Right from John. You know what I'm saying? Because go to our tax people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't do it, bro. Oh. If they got a tax office in the building, their tax thing is set up to make sure that the, the full regime is okay. And you take the liability. Don't oh. do it. Oh, we forgot to charge for IFTA last quarter, so we got to double it up this month. Mm. Oh, uh, we forgot about this escrow fee that we didn't charge it for, so now we got to we gotta take it back out of next month's settlement. Oh, uh, uh, this insurance policy, you got this payment and this payment. and Oh, you f- we forgot we got to add on this extra cargo fee. And, oh, we, we got to charge it for your ELD now and your prepass. And, oh, you got all these toll bills in these states that we got to pay mm. for now. Oh, uh, you got to pay for the ser- service on your tablet. That's thirty dollars a month. And mm-hmm. It just don't break it. it. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's it. You look at this tablet like this ain't no iPad. They want eight hundred fifty dollars for that joint, yes, sir. You can go to T-Mobile right now, get them fifty three cent. They give you one of them jump. Yeah, but that's how they do you. That's what we got to tell you. You first get to get, just take your time, bro. You ain't why you rushing to the molestation and you, and you may why everything is like rape. We use rape terms because that's what it feel like. When you get your check and you grow six grand and you get fourteen hundred dollars for some back pay you owe, I've gotten uh, I've gotten a, a check stuff from the league that said negative six thousand dollars. They gave me my check and it said I owed them six grand. And wasn't gonna see a dime until they got there. <laughs> oh no! Unless you go plead and they're like, all right, we'll break it up into twelve hundred dollar payments for four weeks. So now you just getting six, seven, eight hundred dollars so you can eat because they at least need you to stay alive. That's the game you can get into. Now, is there some is there some uh, great stories? Yeah, there is. But there's way more horror stories than there are of uh, of great stories. Another thing too is who you know. Yes. Like he said, he's in this position because he was around the right people. You're not just walking in and sitting where Phil is at right now. That's a fact. Phil's on the show. The person who hired him has seen him on the show. Yeah. Watched him, all that type of stuff. It ain't like he just walked in the office and just like hire me, Jack. Right. The person I, I work for, he he's a very he's a very principle based person. So if your character ain't together, he's not dealing with you anyway. It's not even a conversation. Right. Then it then it'll be com- people be dropping diss records about how you owe me for six loads. <laughs> <laughs> Stay up, be happy, pay the loads, bro. You owe the load, I'll pay it. I'm out at 5,000, this is Diggy Down Brown. You're gonna first see this. You're first gonna see this on uh, New Regime Patreon. They getting it first. Might not get it like tonight. So when I leave here in a, in a while, I'm going straight to edit it. Gotta send Phil all the links so he can look at himself <laughs> and all that type of stuff. <laughs> and I'm going I'm gonna drop it on Patreon immediately. Ba-da-da-da-da-da. Join the Discord. A lot of good conversations going on in there, and the notifications from the Discord are one hundred percent. They don't play that game. As soon as some pop, it goes off. Um, other than that, you got something you want to say? What's the name of your channel? Just Feel TV. Um, my content is based around my hobbies. I mess with cars. I have a Honda right now. Um, I'm looking to get into other things as I as I progress in my business journey. There's other cars I want to get into. Um, I do want to get into motorcycles at some point, so all of that's to come in the future. Sub to him immediately. He is one of the main panelists on the Patreon. Don't do drugs. And don't. This is my thing. Just don't do it. Just don't do it, bro. Ever. No drinking, man. Put put the beer down, man. Please. Put it down. I know y'all like just the beer. Just don't do it, man. You got to see the. You got to protect it. You got to protect it. I always put it this way. 
when you out for your 30 days OTR, don't drink till you get home. So don't be that guy that, oh, I'm in the hotel and now I'm getting twisted in the hotel. Don't, don't be that guy. Please. Howdy, 5,000. Make sure you sub to the channel when you get the real stuff about tr uh, trucking.